Growing up as a kid in the 90s in Canada, YTV was the channel that everybody watched. Because they, at that time, were the only way we could see so many big shows that were only on the U.S. networks that we couldn't get up here. Shows like the original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, the first season aired there until the CRTC forced them to pull it off the air because there were so many complaints from parents over the violence. Uh, They were also the first to air Gundam Wing, Sailor Moon, and Pokemon. They aired the original Buffy the Vampire Slayer a full week before it debuted in the United States. And they also aired the very popular Reboot, the world's first 3D animated cartoon. But because the technology was so new, it was taking longer than normal for episodes to be produced. And the network got flooded with phone calls and letters from viewers wanting to see more, to the point their on-air hosts, the PJs, had to beg viewers to please be patient. We're working on it. So YTV was a big hit and still is to this day. Uh, By the late 90s, the network was shifting to more of a Nickelodeon style with um, slime and bathroom humor. And one of the big shows to come out of that era was this month's subject matter. It's time to look back at Uh Uh-Oh. What do you say when your science project contaminates the whole school? Uh Uh-oh was a long-running kids' game show that aired on YTV from September of 1997 to April 2003 for a total of six seasons. It was in fact a spin-off of the popular variety show It's Alive. The show features a whole crew of hosts. The main host is Wink Yahoo a character originally featured on It's Alive and portrayed by actor Scott Yappy. Here, Scott reprises his role. Wink is basically a parody of the stereotypical game show host. Bouffant haircut, cheesy voice, fake smile, and tacky suits. Wink's a total fake, but in this case, that just means Scott's doing a good job, because he's supposed to be acting like a fake game show host. Initially, he was a bit stiff, but... Over time, he got better. Along with Wink slash Scott are Sam Cook as Slash and Sam, and Aaron Alexander as Taryn Aaron, who serve as the referees during the Mayhem games. The first season had Joseph Pierre as Jumpin' Joe, but he was replaced after that one season by Aaron. And unfortunately, I couldn't find any footage of any episodes of Joe, Sam and Aaron do a decent job, but they both have a tendency to be unnecessarily mean when the contestants lose. I guess it's just part of the gimmick. Patricia Ribeiro portrays Quizmaster Patricia and pulls double duty hosting both the speed round and the dump. She's the better of the co-hosts and deserves a lot of praise for how quickly she rattles off questions in the speed round. More on that later. And also on hand is The Punisher, who is there to perform the slimings for the Uh Uh-Oh! game. He was originally portrayed by Mike Beaver, and was later portrayed by Sean Bubba Locks. The character is basically like a mentally insane man in a mask, who seems to get his jollies by bullying kids. When he's introduced at the start of the show, he seems to terrorize members of the audience with slime or a super soaker, and on at least one occasion he went after Wink. This continues until Wink says, Punisher! Punisher! Control! 
I'm sorry, but a grown man who gets his jollies from sliming kids and pushing them around is a total asshat and needs professional help. And the whole control thing quickly got old. Now the game. Three teams of two play. While one player is standing ready at the big wheel, their partner is off on the other side of the set. Wink explains the basic rules better than I ever could. Well, let's look at the rules, shall we? Each spin of the wheel could alter your points, force you into messy activities, pose you some quick quizzes, or result in all sorts of unpleasant surprises. Mayhem, uh-oh, speed round, or the dump! Which one are they going to get? Let's see. In turn, each contestant spins the wheel to determine which game they'll play. I'll start with the easiest ones. Win and spin is tw means 20 free points for the team and an additional spin. Lose and spin costs the team 20 points, but they get another spin. And the infamous oh-so-fair trade and spin allows the team to tr swap points with another team of their choice. If a team hits either one of these on their second spin, however, they don't get a third spin. The next game is Mayhem. In this game, their partner will have to perform some sort of silly or messy stunt within 20 seconds. And if they succeed, they earn 50 points. Most of the time, these are all or nothing stunts, meaning they'll either have to complete the stunt or get no points. But on occasion, some stunts have offered less points for only completing a portion of the stunt. 20 seconds just doesn't seem like enough time for a lot of these stunts. And the fact that only some are just randomly played for lesser points really makes the format unbalanced and kind of unfair. And it's just so rushed. Sam, Aaron, and Joe often have to burnstorm through explaining the stunt to the point a lot of contestants don't even understand what they're supposed to do. The difficulty in the stunts is unbalanced as well, and it just becomes clear after a while that some of them weren't even properly tested. Inside the bowl, hit this end, and then catch the egg inside the frying pan. That's all. Every single one that you catch is worth 10 points for a maximum of 50 points in 20 seconds. Tim, are you ready? Yeah. Get set, go! Let me see you. Whoa! And guess what, Tim? <laughs> Good job. You broke the whole thing. You didn't even catch the egg. So you know what? No points for the green team. Oh. Hey, that's right. You break the merchandise, you pay for it. And the next game is the speed round and you want to talk about rushed, the contestant has 20 seconds to answer up to 10 of Quizmaster Patricia's questions. Each correct answer is worth 5 points. The questions are mostly pretty easy, and there are often some gimme ones like, do you like my hair, can you whistle? Or there could be 3 or 4 questions in a row with the same answer. So it's pretty easy to get at least 4 or 5. But on at least one occasion, the contestant got a zero for answering I don't know to every question. But since we don't shame kids for dumb answers on game shows here at Game Show Garbage, I'll just leave it there. And you won't be seeing that in the dumb, retro dumb answer of the week. On the plus side, though, I think Patricia deserves some praise for how she brainstorms through the questions. Just watch. Welcome to the speed round. Now you have 20 seconds to answer 10 questions. You get five points for each correct answer. If you know it, say it. If you don't know it, say pass. Are you ready? Yeah. Starting now. On Reboot, what is Enzo's dog's name? I don't know. How many bases in baseball? Three. How, what sport does Shaquille O'Neal play? Basketball. Do turtles lay eggs? Yes. Fill in the blank. Chicken noodle? Soup. Macaroni and? Cheese. Peanut butter and? Jelly. In the TV show Friends, how many friends are there? Four. Lisa Kudrow plays which friend? I don't know. Who's your best friend? Giant. Good job! Wink, how did he do? Did I just say seven? Seven times five is 35 points, so 35 points go up on the board for blue right there! The next game is the dump, which Wink has called his favorite game. The contestant is given a ball to put into a pipe of their choice into a demented sort of pinball machine to determine their fate. There are spaces and holes all throughout it that could win or lose the team up to 50 points, they can award another team points, or they can steal points from another team of their choice. The final game is the show's trademark, Uh-Oh. 
When this happens, the Punisher drags the contestant's partner to a booth that kind of looks like a torture chamber, and the contestant is asked a question. The correct answer wins 50 points and rescues their partner. A wrong answer earns nothing, and their partner gets slimed. The slimy is all in good fun, but why the torture chamber? It's been established many times in Seidelman's inductions of its torture and the chamber that torture isn't fun. And it's even worse when kids are involved. By the way, if I ever talk about the chamber again, I'm going to staple my ball sack to this table. This round continues until each team has two turns at the wheel. Round 2 is the Slime Tour, or Field Games, as it was renamed during the show's final season. The Slime Tour consists of yet another crew of hosts who travel the country holding these special promotional events. The main attraction being a messy obstacle course with three local kids competing for a small prize. Of course, they have to give these kids corny nicknames, and they've clearly loaded them with pop and pixie sticks before the race. By the final season, the event was no longer a tour and was always held in, in Toronto at the National Exhibition Center and just featured kids from that city. Meanwhile, the three in-studio teams try to predict who will win the race. If they choose correctly, they earn 35 points. It just feels really disconnected from the rest of the show. And it was just a way to add uh, some more time to the game. Why did they could have easily just extended the first and the third round, which I'm going to talk about in just a minute, by another spin? But eh, what do I know? Round three is played just like round one, but with the partners switching places. Beginning in the second season, one of the uh ohs on the wheel was replaced with uh oh deluxe. It's played just like uh-oh, but with a correct answer to a tougher question now being worth 75 points, while a wrong answer means the contestant's partner gets slimed twice. Well, twice is a stretch. The second bucket may have been filled a quarter of the way, and was a much thinner, watery slime, so really all it did was wash away the first sliming. What's the point? And it wasn't until the fourth season when the producers suddenly had an epiphany. Just use another bucket filled the same height of the same mix. Why did it take him so long to figure that out? In the fifth season, Uh-Oh Deluxe was replaced with Picket, represented by a pitcher of Wink picking his nose. Classy. Picket gives the contestant their choice of event, including Uh-Oh Deluxe, and now this was the only way to get to Uh-Oh Deluxe. By the sixth season... Picket, which had never really gotten over, was replaced with a space featuring the show's new main sponsor, Fruit Gushers. Upon hitting this, the contestant would bob for giant Fruit Gushers. Under each one was a point value from 5 to 75 points, and they were all color-coded either red, green, or blue. So whichever color got the points. And the contestant had a maximum of 20 seconds to bob for one gusher. Never have I seen such a blatant use of subliminal advertising in my life. The team with the most points at the end of the game wins and receives the grand prize. All three teams get a prize, but of lesser value depending on where they finish. And really the prizes were not, never all that great. The grand prize might have been worth three, four hundred dollars, second prize half that, third prize half that. And the contestants and audience members all got supplies of Hubba Bubba Bubblegum and Fruit Gushers. Yeah, that's exactly what these already overexcited kids need. More sugar. My thoughts on the show overall? I'm on the fence. It was okay. Clearly the kids liked it. I liked it as a kid. But now that I'm watching it as an adult, I can see how it gets old really fast. Having each team take an arbitrary amount of spins in each round often led to anticlimactic games. Wink's character and his shtick got old after a while. And so much of it, the show felt kind of cheap. And it was all just too rushed. Too many ideas crammed into one show. It's an okay time waster. 
but I don't suggest binge watch binge watching it. It'll just get too boring after a while. Baseball season is about to begin in April, so with that in mind, for April in the Games of Canada, we'll be talking about the short-lived sports game show, Game Out. It was pretty much a Jeopardy ripoff, and you'll see what I mean next month, if you haven't already heard of it. Until then, Mark Power, keep your stick on the ice. <laughs> Bye.